My name is Hannah Soar, and I go to the Philadelphia High School for the Creative and Performing Arts. And my summer project was What Makes Salts Taste Salty? So for background, this is an image of sodium chloride. What sodium chloride is, is actually table salt, the stuff that we put into a salt shaker. And this next image right here is showing us what sodium chloride is actually made out of. And we can see these small purple spheres is positively charged sodium, and these larger green spheres is negatively charged chloride, and they're tightly compacted. But when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, these two separate from each other, and that's called ionization. So our cation is positively charged sodium, and our anion is negatively charged chloride. So what we know is sodium is important for salt taste. What we don't know is if other cations are salty and how. We also don't know the role that anions play in salty taste. So what is my question? We hypothesize that the intensity of salt taste depends on the specific identity of the cation and anion. So why does this matter to us? This matters because everybody loves salt and salt is essential to making foods taste good. But an excess intake of salt can actually lead to high blood pressure and hypertension. And both of these can lead to having a stroke or a heart attack, and that can eventually lead to one's death. So salt taste comes from stimulating cells and taste buds in the oral cavity. And taste buds can be found on the tip of the tongue, the sides of the tongue, the back of the tongue, the throat, and the soft palate. And if you look to the side, at the fungiform, these small tadpole-like figures are actually the taste buds. Here, we have a cartoon of an enlarged taste bud. Every taste bud has around 80 to 100 taste cells, with some of those cells being salt taste cells. And salt can stimulate these cells by entering through a hole in the epithelium. What the epithelium is, is the skin of the mouth. And this hole is called the taste pore. So salt enters through the taste pore to stimulate and activate these salt taste cells by ent entering through ion channels. And here we have an image of ion channels. We can see that this is the outside of the cell, this is the inside of the cell, and this is the cell membrane. In ion channels, are proteins that make a window to allow salt ions to pass through the salt taste cells selectively. So for example, we can see that this is a sodium channel where only sodium passes through, this is a potassium channel where only potassium passes through, and this is a chloride channel where only chloride passes through. So what we did was we plotted salty taste intensity for six concentrations for these ions. Sodium, potassium, chloride, and gluconate. We had 46 people take six concentrations of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium gluconate, and potassium gluconate. We also had a subset of subjects also taste sucrose and quinine. Every solution was tasted twice. The subjects rated on a labeled magnitude scale the saltiness, sourness, sweetness, bitterness, and, ev and otherness of every solution. Here is a labeled magnitude scale. It's a very commonly used scale that's validated and it gives us numeric data. Then steps one and two are repeated until every solution was rated four times in total. So this is what we found. Here in my first panel, you can see the y-axis is labeled as the salt taste intensity on LMS. So five is weak, 15 is moderate, and 30 is strong. And on our x-axis, we have our salt concentrations starting with no salt in the water to five increasing concentrations. And for reference, at 0.4 molar, that is more than three times the salt levels of a can of soup. And for sodium chloride, we can see that its increase is very steep and it reaches about strong. Next, we have potassium chloride where the axes are labeled the same. But unlike sodium chloride, its increase is not as steep and it reaches just above moderate. We now have sodium gluconate. And for both of our gluconates, 
we tested higher concentrations because we suspected that gluconate would not be as salty as chloride. But still, we can see at 0.4 molar, sodium gluconate is half as salty as sodium chloride. And lastly, we have potassium gluconate, where the same as sodium gluconate, where we tested higher concentrations. And at 0.4 molar, we can see that so potassium gluconate was rated weak. Now we can compare all four of our graphs. So comparing by row, we can see our chloride salts are at the top and our gluconate salts are at the bottom. And we can see that both of our chloride salts are saltier than our gluconate salts. Comparing by column, we can see that we have our sodium salts on the left and our potassium salts on the right, and both of our sodium salts are saltier than our potassium salts. And this is a group average of all 46 subjects. Here is an individual representative of those subjects. And we chose this person because their data closely resembles the group's data. And we know that they're a reliable subject as they were tested four times shown by the lines here and all of their tests are very similar to each other. We also found that some subjects are insensitive to salts, meaning that they cannot taste the salts that strongly in the saltiness of them. And out of our 46 subjects, there were nine subjects that are insensitive to salts and that is 20% of them. And here is another individual representative, as our last slide was the group averages. And again, we chose this subject because their results closely mimic the results of our group averages. And we know that this person is salt insensitive, as you can see that they respond very low to the saltiness of sodium chloride. But when we rate their sweetness of sucrose and their bitterness of quinine, they rate them typically. And we also found that low salty raters to potassium chloride can taste potassium chloride, but they don't taste it as salty. They taste it as either bitter or other. Using subject eight as an example, this subject rated bitterness for potassium chloride rather than saltiness. And there were five other subjects like this one. Using subject 35, they rated potassium chloride as otherness instead of saltiness. And there were three other subjects like them. So for our conclusions, we found that sodium salts are saltier than potassium salts. We found the saltiness of sodium salts rises faster with concentration, resulting in a greater slope. We found that chloride salts are much saltier than glucane salts. We found that sodium chloride is very privileged as sodium is the saltier cation and chloride is the saltier anion. So you would get a strong, clean, salty taste from sodium chloride. Whereas with potassium gluconate, it is the complete opposite as potassium is the least salty cation and gluconate is the least salty anion. So you would not get much of a salty taste from potassium gluconate. We also found that some subjects are severely salt insensitive to all the salts tested. But as of right now, we're unsure why. And lastly, we found some subjects taste potassium salts as bitter or other tasting rather than salt. So for our takeaway messages, to benefit human health overall, we want to reduce sodium intake to reduce hypertension. The problem is that people love sodium salts, sodium's salty taste, and it makes foods taste better the anion. We learn the anion influences salt taste intensity. There's a lot of sodium in our salts, such as bread, that is paired with non-salty ions. Introducing chloride would enhance that saltiness. And the cation. Sodium is not the only salty taste in cation. For example, potassium chloride is almost as salty as sodium chloride on average, but for many people, potassium chloride has other taste qualities. And lastly, I would like to thank the members of my lab, Paul Breslin, Linda Flammer, Annalette Tharp, and Natasha Rivers. And our research was supported by individual contributions to the Monell Science Apprenticeship Program 
and funds from corporate partners from the first Monel Salt Consortium. Thank you.